Hello there, this is Jet from JetSpencer.com and today I'm going to be doing a book review for you. Today's book is Remember, Be Here Now by Ram Das. And this particular book is a quintessential understanding of how to actually attain happiness. Now, at the beginning of this book, the author has everything that you would expect from someone who is happy. He's got a professorship at Harvard. He has a super awesome motorcycle. He's got a Mercedes Benz. He's got a sailboat. And just when you think I've said it all, the guy has a freaking airplane. I mean, Jesus, the guy's got to be happy, right? Apparently not. What this actually encapsulates inside of this book is his journey, starting as a Harvard professor until eventually he himself has transcended his own experiences and eventually attains happiness. So, with that being said, what do I give this book? Five stars. Now, before I get into the review itself, I will say, you can see here, the white pages are the actual story. All of this, well, we'll get into it a bit later. So let's go. I'm going to be breaking down this book into three different parts. The first part being a social science, a second part being a psychedelic, and a third part being a yogi. So at the beginning of the book, the author is a Harvard professor. He's teaching Freudian theory, motivation, as well as child development. He's teaching to students that pay thousands of dollars every single year just to hear what he is saying and to learn from it. And what he begins to realize is that the things that he is espousing is not actually helping him in his own life. The Freudian theory, the motivation, the child development, none of it is actually making him happy. Now, these are supposed to be quintessential core principles of psychology and sociology. You would think you'd be able to take that information that's being given, put it into yourself, and use it in your own life to actually make you happy. And he begins to feel like a fraud. Why am I saying these things? Why am I teaching these things? If they're not actually helping me in my own life, how can I expect it to help somebody else? He just feels like he's missing something. He's searching for the answer. And what ends up happening is one of his colleagues actually hand him some mushrooms. He gets together, you know, a bunch of other professors, and they take it. And during this experience, he has, well, quite an experience. He begins to see all of these titles, all of this grandeur, all of these symbols that have been confirmed as him. He sees himself as the teacher. He sees himself as the seducer. He sees himself as a son. He's all these different titles. And as these images begin to flow towards him, the teacher begins to fizzle away and die. He says, that's okay. The teacher is gone. That's okay. He sees the seducer. He begins to melt away and die. That's okay. He sees the sun. He's a sun. That begins to fizzle and die. That's okay. Everything is okay. All of these titles, this grandeur, these symbols, they're all dying before his very eyes, but he continues to tell himself that's okay until he looks down at his hands and he begins to see that his fingers, they're disappearing. His hands, they're disappearing. His arms, they're disappearing. His body is disappearing. That's not okay. I, wh who am I without my body? Without my body, who am I? Who am I? He can't accept this. Eventually, the mushrooms wear off. But the question still remains. 
who am I? He confers with his other professors. They tell him about similar experiences. There are varying degrees. So this, you know, it's up it up a notch, right? They take more mushrooms. He has a very similar experience. Death to the teacher. Death to the seducer. Death to the sun. And his body again begins to melt away and disappear. And finally, he accepts it. He says, if I'm not the teacher, if I'm not the seducer, if I'm not the son, if I'm not the body, then who am I? He is everything and he is nothing. He is everyone and he is no one. He's found peace. He's no longer attaching himself to certain images or symbols, to certain titles, to certain expectations. He's removing himself completely from all of that. He begins to see that I'm not these voices. I'm not these titles. I'm not these symbols. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm more than all of that. He begins to realize that he is so much more than he ever thought he was. He is the watcher of all of these thoughts. He is the watcher of all of these titles. He realizes they're not actually real. And eventually, he moves it up. And he moves and experiments with the LSD. Now, these are some very profound visions that only if you yourself take mushrooms or LSD can actually describe. Uh, it, it's, it's so mind-bending, the, the, the nature of it that you don't actually, you can't actually understand it unless you actually do it. And I'm not actually advocating that you do this, but uh, you'll learn a lot. He feels this state of bliss, this state of oneness with the world. He's no longer looking at people like, hey, these, these, this is different about you. You know, you have black skin, I have white skin. You know, you have this nose, I have that nose. You have this hair, I have that hair. No, he begins to see the similarities in people. He no longer is disconnecting himself from people, but actually connecting himself with people. And over time, he continues to run into this problem where he finally feels like he knows, he understands, he gets it. He understands life, he understands what it's all about but it always fades away. The mushrooms dissipate, the LSD stops working, and he always just comes back to reality. And those titles return, that voice in his head returns, you know, the symbols return, everything returns. And he, he has no idea what to do. So he heads off, vast journey into India. He does it all. He climbs the mountains. He sees the, the Dalai Lama. He goes to the temples. He heads into China, Tibet. He sees everything. He's getting towards the end of his trip, but he still doesn't have the answer that he wants until he runs into a young man. Young man, no shoes on his feet, just some pants. But everywhere he goes, people seem to worship the ground that he walks on. And there's something about this man, something about his aura that he's putting out onto the world that makes him feel safe, that makes him feel connected, that makes him feel like he's known this man his entire life. And he has a choice to make. Do I return to America and go back to the way I was living my life? Sure, I had the trappings of success. Sure, I had the car, the clothes, the girls, the freaking airplane, the boat, right? He had it all. But he decided to stay. And what he realized was he would go on these journeys, these from temple to temple with this young man. And every single time he would bring up the past. Oh, I'm going to tell you this awesome story. The man would say to him, remember, be here now. 
He would start going off about, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow? What's going, what's going to happen? Am I going to be able to complete this? Am I going to be able to do this? And the man always would return. Remember, just be here now. And, you know, he would have these, these heartaches. You know, he was living on the streets in the times that he wasn't at the monasteries. He would lay on these benches and his, his back would ache. His, his hips would turn and curl and he'd just feel so much pain. The man would say to him, emotions are like waves. They come and go. Those voices that go on in your head, the constant berating, the constant negativity, that voice saying that you're not enough, that you're not going to be good enough until you reach this title, that you're not going to be strong enough until you attain this, that your life, you are a terrible person if you follow your heart, if you follow your balls, if you live in the present moment. No. Remember, be here now. Get in touch with your body. Breathe deeply. Don't put a moral judgment on the thoughts that go on in your head. Simply witness those thoughts. Learning language has been the greatest thing in human history. But a lot is lost. A lot of things cannot be explained in words. You know, when we used to say, mm -hmm, uh -uh, these, these guttural sounds, still communication. Communication is the greatest asset. Language is the greatest asset. But what it also creates is an ego. These titles, these symbols, these philosophies, some things simply cannot be explained in words. They can only be experienced through your, your five senses. Remember, be here now. That's what this book is ultimately about. It's about remembering to be in the present moment. That the present moment is the only thing that is actually real. That's not to say don't plan for the future. That's not to say if you have a goal that you want to attain that you shouldn't attain it. But you should love the journey. Be here now in the present moment. Because this is where life is lived. This is where happiness is derived. It's being in the present moment. Not in your head. Not in these dark thoughts. Not in attaining these titles. It's about being present. Being in the moment. He goes through a multiple uh, information on yoga as well. Helping you get into the present moment. Meditation. Getting you into the present moment. Walks in nature, getting you in the present moment. Listening to a certain kind of music, bringing you into, ultimately, the present moment. And I think this is critical. Um, me, myself, you know, I work a very physical job. And a lot of times I get very dark and I, I get very cynical. Am I, am I going to make it on YouTube? Am I, am I ever going to be providing uh, for myself and my family and no longer be beholden to a master? These thoughts race through my mind. Am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Am I strong enough? Am I consistent enough? Am I this? Am I that? It doesn't matter. What matters is being here now. And whenever I catch myself just racing into those thoughts again, negativity, toxicity, I'm not good enough, it all disappears when I just say, hey, remember, be here now. It's a mantra that I recommend you say to yourself every moment that you're going into those dark thoughts or any thoughts really because a lot of things you are completely capable of doing in the present moment because that's ultimately when you're doing the action it's when you're present it's not when you're thinking it's not when you're brainstorming it's when you're actually doing it getting your hands dirty so i'm going to throw some images up right now but as you can see again the book right here is the actual story but all of these pages herein are all designed to bring you into the present moment. And it's very cool. And ultimately, that is the message of this book. 
Remember, be here now. Really hope you enjoyed the book review. If you did, make sure to check out the description below. I link the book in there. If you happen to purchase it through there, it really helps out the channel quite a bit. Also make sure to like, subscribe, and or comment. And as always, good fortune to you, my friend. Use this information wisely, and I promise you, you will find your bliss. Oh.